I'd like to call the economic development bank with a big uh, meeting to order today is Thursday, February 12th. Um, do we have any comments, or questions, or edits to the minutes? Nope. Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Ira's not here, so uh, he is walking in. He should yes. be here shortly. Um, would you like them to go first? Oh my goodness! Yes. Okay. Here we go. Okay. All right. <laughs> you, you can take a breather, and we can we can. Sit. No, no, that's that's fine. Okay. I might sit though. What's Courtney? No, I'm making life difficult. I could have taken with him over here. Here we go. All right. Morning. 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 Um, so I guess I'm on the agenda for two items. Um, Chris had contacted me about the EDC, the website. Um, but I believe you guys also wanted an update. Maybe that might have been you, Mark. We didn't get a chance to talk you were yeah, looking for. a brief summary of the last year. Because I think uh, yeah. And uh, secondly, uh, an outline of your budget request yeah. for the next year. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess I could take care of both agenda items at once since uh, the town website's at the top of my uh, report here. Um, so you guys obviously have been intimately involved <laughs> in the town website. Um, and what I've been updating you on as I've been here each month, uh, we um, got together with Virtual Town Hall at the end of November. And then um, subsequently, in the beginning of January, we got together with the first selectman. And in that meeting was also Rick Bazzano, Hiram, uh, Stephanie Reef. Oh, I forgot Sarah Nielsen. I apologize. Oh, no, she's here. Sarah, Jeff. Um, so we wanted to um, bring the first selectman up to speed on what was going on. Obviously, Lisa, been having been involved with the board um, prior to taking on her role as first selectman, um, had been fairly up to date on this. But um, we were at a a point we're at a point now where um, we're getting ready to sign a contract with virtual town hall so that's pretty exciting so um, we ran through um, some templates that um, and had some discussions again around the Drupal the back door of the website um, Rick's satisfaction with what we'll be able to accomplish by staying with virtual town hall and then also bringing Stephanie up to speed because there are some short and long-term goals that will have to be um, considered for um, making sure that um, not just the town website itself but specifically the economic development portion of it that I know you guys are most eager about has a mechanism for sustainability and content and some different things like that so we talked um, a little bit about uh, the role that she could play in that as well um, so the uh, task force at our January 20th meeting was um, shared that same um, update and um, there was actually an enthusiastic round of, of applause which was rather exciting that uh, we'll be moving forward with the virtual town hall um, partnership and that um, the template that we created what we really wanted to do was to give that to them to say okay you know we've met with you you've seen what we've wanted but um, you know we want to confirm before we sign on the dotted line that this is something you can achieve. You have the programming capabilities to design it the way we would like and, and such. Um, and so that was confirmed. They did come back to us with what we felt was um, an increase that wasn't something that we, um, we thought was appropriate. So we worked on that and negotiated um, that down. So we're at about a $12,500 um, total. Um, and that, um, so what they're waiting for from us now is to execute that contract and then give them some feedback on the template that they created just to get started with the redesign. Does um, the Board of Selectmen have to vote on this prior to the contract being signed with, with Virtual Town Hall? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, yeah. the money was already appropriated in the budget. Right. Um, it's something that we've talked about and contemplated. I'm not, a, I'm not, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't want to know if there was going to yeah. be a delay because it and had to go. No, there's no delay. I know I can tell you that um, next week we'll be meeting with Virtual Town Hall and Rick Pisano yeah. to finalize that. Um, and if this, I think the select meeting on the 17th, 
uh, 23rd. 23rd. Yeah. So at the latest, it'll start by then. So yeah. And the, and the templates, as Nancy said, the templates are already set and ready to go. So right. Yeah. Lots of discussions have already taken place on it. And then having met with the first selectman, I mean, there was no indication that that was necessary. So I think we're proceeding as as we uh, anticipated. So the template really is just sort of the outline that we then start filling in. It, it was actually a home page design it's a, so okay, it, it was really and it was not done um, and actually there was some discussion with the first selectman we got a little bit into the weeds of wordsmithing it was to show um, what we wanted the site to look like in its conceptual um, um, and conceptuality and then um, what we're going to do is work with them they again they took that they plugged it into their system can we achieve what you guys are looking for? Um, and I think they can. And um, I should also say, in discussing this with the first selectman, um, certainly there's um, some uh, goals uh, in terms of communication, um, alerts, and different things like that that are appropriate to be on the home page. So what we want to do, what I think we can do, is to strike a balance between um, really creating a good brand for the town and at the same time, um, you know, knowing that it's obviously um, you know, a source for residents and businesses that, that it would still have those same um, alerts and pertinent information. So is it still similar to what was presented as um, similar to the Nashville website that we had looked at? Yes, I should say that was the guide. Um, and I didn't want to steal Jeff Thunder and, and he had put together a template and he's out of town this week. Um, but really we're at a phase now where, um, and as I mentioned about wordsmithing when we were in with the first selectman, we're going to take a look at that in more detail and we'll share some of those things as the marketing committee, um, you know, uh, works through the redesign. Now, how, so, so, of all the, the work that EDC's done, how, how does EDC's and some of the things we wanted to see on our website, how does that evolve? Yeah, so so sort of two arms of, of what we're doing, and that is um, Rick Bazano is pulling together some analytics in terms of the most commonly visited pages, um, and then working with town staff in regards to even phone and visits to the town hall so we can make sure that when we are taking a look towards reorganizing some of the information that it's done in a way that meets the highest and best use of the site itself and we'll also be revisiting the outline that was originally uh, you know that Chris originally put together so obviously that's changed a bit because we went from what was originally going to be two separate sites to one and we, we obviously that, that that all came about because of the duplication that was in that outline so we'll take a look at that um, so there'll be a chance for the people on on this commission who've been involved in this to actually have input on that <coughs> at some point so that we can say can we tweak this and do this and move that over here and that kind of stuff um, that'll primarily be done by the marketing group on the task force but with the input that has already been received by the EDC on that outline and then also Hiram as well but certainly I'm here every month with you guys and um, you know I'll share with you as I do in regular emails what you know we're, we're working on so um, you know we're, we're obviously very excited to be at this particular point with this and we talked about the timing of it once we give the feedback on the template and we get that information um, to virtual town hall on the analytics and things like that then um, you know they'll go to work um, really putting that all together and um, being mindful of the fact that it's budget time we didn't want to you know bog down staff too much in that but I think um, I believe the first selection at their last staff meeting already shared where we were at with this and they're you know they're working on pulling together there so let me see we're February now so what would you say when we might be looking at our new our new EDC website uh, that you know the new refresh look and all that well, it's the new stuff. town website I mean mm -hmm. well the new right. town and then, right of course dropping down right. from that EDC would that be April May um, I probably know better when we share the template with them okay. you know so it's I, I think from their perspective and having done some of this professionally um, it's really getting through that first phase of looking at stuff and and tweaking it and then they should be able to especially when you get into the um, tertiary pages of the site where the you know that information to a various department is pretty templated and standard um, and I think really the more of the focus will be to make sure that we take that outline for the EDC and um, you know take a hard look at getting that relevant information you know, up there as well has there been a consensus on what the heritage charm adventure is changing to yet well uh, as you the second point here oh I'm sorry you're so no I didn't mean to steal your thunder <laughs> 
Um, so part of, um, in November when, it's October, November when the marketing group got together, all the months are melding together now, um, a, a refresh of the town brand was incorporated into we were, when we were working on the website template. And so um, we shared that as well, not only with the first selectmen, but the task force in January. And um, what was Heritage Charm Adventure was Heritage Charm Opportunity and may eventually become Heritage Adventure Opportunity. So uh, Mark, ironically, it was your wife who spoke to the adventure. So she, being very adventurous, <laughs> was the one that wanted to have um, that. And I think it spoke to, we talked about the meadows and you know the triathlon, all those different things that, that speak to the fact that you can you know, have that kind of experience as a resident, a visitor. And, oh, culture. You know. Sorry, it just popped into my head. It, no, that's okay. It's, um, I, I think the discussion around heritage charm was that culture, all that stuff sort of melds into that, that grouping. Um, and so we're going to take a closer look at what the current, um, materials are that, that spoke to originally creating those three words and see um, how we can group that together and confirm that and so that's what the marketing group is going to be tasked with doing so I had indicated here just where we are with it, heritage charm adventure opportunity and then the core statement that had come out of the group Simsbury is a high value community quality of life is a chief attraction for people looking to move to Simsbury and a key reason current citizens stay as well as the strongest asset for retaining and attracting business so um, that's a mouthful obviously when you look at the design yeah. You'll see heritage charm opportunity or or heritage adventure opportunity, but we're going to work through that and finalize that, um, and that'll come out of the work of the template. So, will you be taking feedback on the kind of tagline and core statement? I mean, if people have ideas to submit, we we pretty much worked a lot through that. So, I think at this point, the task force had said at this last round that they're going to bring it back to the marketing group to finalize. And are they going back to the notes that were? taken at the town oh, there was town meetings or there was focus groups or something around the original creation of the heritage charm exactly. adventure like what 10 years ago yeah. or whatever and then even then when when the group initially got together there was some um, discussion around that some some feedback shared and some bullet points um, that spoke to all of that so um, that work has sort of been underway all along and um, you know, certainly if there's any additional thoughts you guys have, but the marketing group really wants to take that. So as we get into the template, we're, that's being solidified and moved forward with the work on the website. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the the, the tagline, you know, the, the, the three words to me is kind of less important to provide, you know, kind of feedback on. But if the tagline, if the core statement is the first thing that, you know, kind of people see, when they come to the website, I don't, is it, is it going to be it's actually the, the opposite? So um, I mean, if the template itself in included the words heritage, charm, opportunity, so it's really and if you go back to the branding that the town's been using for the eight plus years, the focus is really on those three words. It's not with a longer explanation of this. It was um, that statement was sort of what led into. Um, looking back at and the marketing study actually um, advocated for the continued use by the town of um, the branding that had already been established so um, it wasn't to reinvent that but to refresh that and so that was the yeah I, no, I mean my, my feedbacks really less on on what three words or what the tagline is and more you know in terms of the rest of the you know the, the content on the site that's going to be the first thing people say. I mean, in terms of the core statement, I mean, just I, I think it, it's. I mean, it could be punched up a little bit. Well, please, uh, I would uh, say um, email Jeff. He's the Jeff. chair, Jeff Dornenberg, the chair of the marketing committee, and. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know how you're going to use. It. See, is how it's going to be used. If it's going to be, if it's just you know, on the flip side of like town materials on the back and it's not being used that much, well then don't spend a lot of time worrying about it. Yeah. I mean, if this is something that's going to be, you know, that you're <coughs> crafting the, you know, some of the message to the website, like the first thing people see or on the economic development piece, you know, that's the t that's what you, you kind of need to spend, you kind of spend some time on. You know, so in terms of that, I mean, if, it, if it's, 
you know, I, I don't want to say, I, I don't mean to make it a you know, pejorative to be like a throwaway, but if, if, if it's not a prominent feature, then I won't, you know, kind of waste any time, waste anybody's time. No, I think it's, it is prom. I think it's prominent because it's the it's the header on the website. It's the the words that go on the board of education piece that um, Main Street worked on. It's the it's the words that go on the brochures that talk about the town. That's the tagline. I think the tagline about the core statement. Oh, the, yeah, core, statement. the core statement. Yeah, the yeah. course. Yeah. If if that if that the core statement probably just keeps the marketing committee in line with what the end goal. You know. Yeah. If it's if it's a tool for the marketing committee to think about how they want to, you know, if it's more of an internal tool for mar the marketing folks to use in terms of how they want to, you know, market the town, then I, then I don't have any problem with it because it doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be that pretty. It just has to kind of have the. You, you know, it just kind of has to have the themes to focus people moving in the right direction. But if that core statement is central to, is what's going to be kind of front and center on the website or or elsewhere, then I'd say, well, I don't know, I don't want to spend more time with that. If it's, if it's more of a tool for the marketing folks to use, then it's fine. Then I think it's fine the way it is. Nancy? Um, a lot of time obviously has been spent on this new website and obviously implicit is the criticism of the website beforehand and what it did or did not do. Um, say year to whatever time frame you like or you feel is fair, what would you be looking for as a judgment that this website does what you think it will do or it doesn't do what you think it will do. Yeah. Will it be more people moving to town, more businesses opening up? Will it be quantitatively judged, or will it be like, let's give it another chance? That's the um, ultimate ROI. question. Uh, yes, yeah. the question of all marketing people <laughs> when well, it comes to so explaining why you spend all that money. And you know, verbiage devoted to this, I would think something well, should happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You can measure analytics. I mean, I think that's tough because a site, a good site, which we don't currently have, is necessary but not sufficient to do exactly what we're talking about here. We're here we're talking about economic development. So bringing business, so bringing high growth, good quality, the types of businesses that people want in their community. It's like table stakes. You kind of have to have it. It's a tool. So it, it's difficult to say, gee, was this site successful? I mean, you could have the best site in the world, but if we fall down and we don't go out and actively bring these businesses <coughs> into Simsbury and go out and actively market and, and court them, well, it doesn't matter what the hell we put up there. The site, the site's gonna be irrelevant. Yeah, so it's I mean, it's really of, just a tool. It is. It's, it's definitely part. part of. Um, but it was interesting, actually. Oz Griebel from Metro Hartford Alliance was at our board of selectmen meeting on Monday night, and um, he was asking the town to re-engage in Metro Hartford Alliance, which, you know, was certainly part of the recommendation of the marketing study. And I don't know if that was actually came out of your budget. I wasn't here for the last meeting. Was that something the board had recommended? As a result of the We've been around that block a couple of times, thoroughly, and uh, if you want to revisit it again, we can, but uh, over the last three years, EDC did not find the bang for the buck yeah. out of Metro Hartford as much yeah. as they sold it to us and told us how good it would be for us. Yeah. So it's interesting, and I was actually one of the, the only one that asked Oz a question, and that is if you make an investment of $5,500 or $6,000, and to your point of the website, what do we get for that? And, you know, years back, they came before the EDC. Um, John Shamo and some other folks that were on were pretty actively, um, not, not, it was more when we called upon them. I don't know if you remember that, Mark. They were here a couple of times. Uh, well, um, what's your name, Johnson? Um, Sandra Johnson. Sandra Johnson. Yeah, she I came and made say, a whole presentation and made the full 
Fork Press. Full Court Press yeah. about why we should be there, and we did discuss it, and the, the value was somewhat elusive for the money yeah. they were asking, which at that time was about 46 dollars Yeah, it's 20 cents dollars. per resident, right. so he was calculating Is the Board of Selectmen going to re-engage the Hartford Metro? Um, I don't know if it's in the first Lackman's budget. That's why I was asking if it e was even something that came through um, the EDC. But um, the bottom line was actually his comment during that meeting was um, the first place people go is to your town website. So if they're aware, and, and so you're talking about, at least the way I think of it, is you've got Main Street, who's your um, you know core to your existing businesses, more small to medium-sized businesses. And then you've got Metro Heart Reliance, who cares about you know larger complexes, bigger complexes, companies, um, you know, larger um, parcels of land and development in regards to uh, in, that, in that respect. And um, so Oz had made the comment, he, you know, we're, we're aware of the Hartford and, you know, so, so you think of what their focus is and, and the fact that um, what they're trying to do in, um, is, is go out and say we've collectively work, you know, have the support of the communities in which we're engaged and working to market those communities holistically. Um, the other ironic thing is um, he also mentioned they're working with CROG and CROG would like to develop, because of the municipal sort of structure that they have, an actual agreement with Metro Hartford on behalf of the communities. So if that actually happens, the direct community contract and, and partnership with Metro Hartford wouldn't be something we would engage in. Although, of course, I would imagine there would be a fee through CROG and, and it would come that way. But I think to that point, it's a very regional approach to economic development and, and a different slice of the pie that that sort of falls under. But my big takeaway from that was his comment around the website. And I was pretty excited because that's exactly what we're trying to do is to do that. So well, I don't want to... Nancy, to, yeah. to Mark's point, he made the presentation of the Board of Selectmen, and when he came in originally, he came in through the EDC, and we put him in on our budget. Yeah. Is that going to be required that he be in our budget, or uh, is it going to be a door that he's got to come through to, to get the support of the Board of Selectmen? I, I think that's what you're getting to, Mark. No? Yeah, and I think we'll know when we see the first Selectmen's budget. Well, I mean, it's so, well, so far... This, it's, oh, it's, it's it's part of uh, the EDC budget that was submitted to the first selectman. Whether it stays there or not, I don't know. But that's uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you there. It's an EDC budget. So, so it's if it's not in our budget, yeah. then it has to be re re upped, if you will, by the board of selectmen. Huh? The first selectman it, it creates. Oh, yeah, the I understand. Yeah, but but we haven't put that into our budget, right? No. Okay. And I think at one point, it obviously was in EDC budget. I think it got moved to the first selectman's budget, then it went away. And so, um, we, haven't been, we haven't been members for three years now. Right. Yeah. So, so. All right. so just moving right along here, um, last but certainly not least is um, sort of refreshing of the, the branding for the town. There's materials that are out there. So um, we're going to be looking at um, the task force undertaking what that would be um, to, to include that as part of refreshing the brand. Again, back to the marketing study and those recommendations. Um, and I know specifically the school piece, Chris, that you mentioned, which is so <laughs> vital and you know was created and is is been not been able to been funded so I think it's a perfect mechanism for the task force um, and um, is everybody familiar with what the school piece is do you remember no it's um, with Main Street <clears throat> they gathered a group of real estate agents I uh, being part of that as an EDC person too of how do we convey the differences between the Simsbury schools versus our surrounding communities that we compete with for people moving into town? Um, because um, real estate agents are not allowed by law to discuss um, what's a good school. Um, we um, have to direct them to websites and it's hard to navigate through all of the different <clears throat> school websites of really what it boils down to that makes us different and special um, and um, with um, Matt Curtis and Martha Hogan who's their webmaster for Board of Ed um, created this piece that really speaks to what makes us exceptional here in Simsbury versus an Avon or a Glastonbury or West Hartford that um, agents can hand because it's published by the Board of Ed to prospective people 
or we can use to attract prospective businesses um, it, that we can't speak to. Um, so um, it's not just scores. It's we have an engineering program. We have you know the culinary arts pro things that you can't really get into unless you were really into the website and you can navigate through the you know public school websites to get down to the details. So is that done or that's it's important? done? It's just not. There's no funding to print it, which is what the marketing group is looking at. So this is next. But Those just recently came about with some of the discussion around this branding and everything and going back to sources of materials that have been used by the town and, and this one that was created enthusiastically and is dying to be used. And at the same time, I would say, we went through some of the initial discussions for the EDC where we were looking at what Marlboro had done, creating step pages in a folder that talked about economic statistics. And so that kind of stuff, we said, you know, that's where you go to your website. That's where the developers are, you know, st you know, going on and pulling all that information. They're not looking at pretty pictures, but from a realtor's perspective, and very important to our community because, um, as you look back to the core statement in terms of being a great place to live and and um, you know that kind of a thing, it um, I think it would be a, a, a great win to be able so to. So how do we get from where we are now to? this being published or put on a website or something so that the public has access it can be, to it. Yeah, I mean, the PDF version of it can be posted as a link to the website when the website's, you know, yeah. rolled out. So that's but our it next also can be printed okay. as a yeah. handout, which from the last task force meeting, they were looking at um, possibly funding that. Yeah. Well, we and as part of the package of yeah. So we have to work um, to look at that now. And part of what we're and when we get down to the budget part of this part, part of our next steps to look at to kind of bring all that back together and finalize that is is getting some um, hard costs to look at we'll, some of that. We'll hear about that in yeah. next meeting or two or three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, economic development evaluation criteria that kind of got a rename at our last meeting and there was some good discussion Carolyn and Chris were there and gave some good input basically it's a great document and people you know there's there's an eagerness to to put it to use but what was realized was that there's a lot of terminology on there that folks may not be aware of um, it was suggested that a glossary of terms accompany that document to educate the EDC in using that to provide some um, uh, certainty and expectations from applicants as they're before the board presenting projects um, and a lot of discussion initially on this document around what is exactly is this supposed to do you know is the dot is the applicant supposed to fill it out well no it's not that's you know you guys know we talked about that that's not what this is for so I think being a discussion guide was what this came you know at the end of the, at the, end of the meeting on the 20th um, was what the task force was um, recommending and then even just physically moving through the document as you have a presentation in front of you um, the ranking of one to five and how that's again consistently understood and can be expedited and so they're just going to uh, the chair of the process committee is um, or excuse me the programs committee is looking at that um, and should have that back to Hiram within the next couple of days and then we're hoping to bring that back before the task force in February to get that just done so you know we, we couple of guys that are really intimately involved in um, you know in land use are, are part of the, the task force and so they just certainly wanted to make sure that um, the developers fully aware and I think what it, it does also do is in providing it to the two um, developers beforehand um, it helps them almost answer the questions for you within their presentation so you'll know exactly what it is that um, they'll know exactly what it is that you're looking for um, so I think that too will help um, ensure some of the consistency and understanding of, of some of the terminology within that so Hiram I think that um, based on the conversation that happened at that meeting I think that if the EDC can have some sort of training on the document before we start implementing it because it's going to become part of public record I want to make sure that there's nothing that um, could potentially lead to a problem down the road if, by how we're voting and how we're using the document and yeah, and that actually, I should say, that was part of the discussion. And um, there's a small comment here on the po process group and their work, and around the idea of orientation for for boards and commissions. So having you folks have a better understanding of some of this stuff um, certainly 
is instrumental in, in um, using the documents successfully and then, as I always said, ultimately taking that and using it as a marketing tool to go out and say, this is why this project is great for our town and um, you know, I encouraging you know, that that project be supported and, and talking about all that it can add um, to our community. So, um, so then uh, business incentive policy, that too, we're on the cusp of a, lo of, of a lot of things, but at the same time, important that they're reviewed and, and um, um, so as they're finalized and brought back before the Board of Selectmen, this particular document has been seen twice by the town attorney and so Hiram's got that back and he's making those um, final edits to that. This is the tax incentive program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, which um, it's tax incentive infrastructure and permit fee um, reductions or, yeah, One package, yeah, right. yes, yes, the trifecta of, um, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's very close to being completed and, and as I said, should be before the task force on the 24th. Um, it came from the board segment back to the task force. It will go back there, and I think we should be able to um, move forward with that. And um, that too does have a funding mechanism within the infrastructure program, which I believe Hiram said has to come through Jeff Shea. And um, we'll see how that comes out in the budget. And if not funded this year, certainly something that can be funded next year. But I think having that policy in place. Is this um, something we're going to try to fund for 15, 16? Infrastructure? To the town engineer, actually, infrastructure is really his bailiwick, and I'll be talking to him about that in the next day or two. With that, and another couple, couple of capital projects as well. Um, this depends on what the board of selectmen's appetite for that is. One of the important things about that is that it's really not a mechanism where money is going to be put in and spent unless there's a project that comes forward. Right. So it's a really value-oriented, value-based uh, procedure. Same with the permits as well. Yeah. The whole project really is a, you know, you get twice as much as you give. So right. we're hopeful that the, that the board of selectmen in, in total okay. will see that. Yeah. Yeah, that's an easy return on investment measure when it okay. comes to, to that. Um, and actually, to that end, just a, a sidebar, um, at our board of selectmen meeting, we had a presentation by um, uh, Joe Mancini on the CIP plan and the senior center. And I bring that up to you folks by way of an update, and I don't want to steal any thunder from <laughs> Chris in making a, an update as liaison, but um, it's imperative um, because of what's on the table right now, um, and I might put a little of my personal twist on this one, but one of the properties that was very in, um, important part of the charrette, which is the parking lot, um, the DOT parking lot, um, and I think the figure that is out there is if that space is utilized for public use instead of private use there could be a loss of a million dollars annually in tax revenue so I was actually at the Main Street partnership meeting yesterday morning and um, they had a very good discussion around um, and I think have shared their position on this repeatedly um, advocating for um, Eno and they'll be sharing that um, with um, Hiram with with Jeff and I think also with Tom Roy because there was discussion around the parking deck. <coughs> uh, the Board of Selectmen has already approved over $500,000 towards streetscape improvements on the parking deck and that has not been executed. That assume that we get the state grant? <coughs> no, we didn't get it. We right? actually went out for it twice and not had not been awarded it, which is very disappointing. Um, but, you know, right now, the CIP plan, what, what Joe shared with us was at sort of that maximum cap, we have that policy of 5 to 7% debt ratio. At 7%, we can fit in $8.3 million, but the question really isn't about how we would maximize our spending, it's how we would, in my opinion, minimize our spending while being able to meet our needs. I would like to see us have a concentration on the purchase of that parking lot for economic development use, if somehow within that $8.3 million we can achieve meeting the needs of the senior slash community center, possibly purchase that parking lot and fulfilling, rounding out the funding of the parking deck and um, streetscape improvements, a huge win all the way across the board. You're talking about the, 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 the state land that's owned down there now? Right. Uh, we would buy that land from the state. Yeah, a lot of steps, and Hiram, maybe you can speak to that, but had been already. That's kind of come out of the blue in the last two or three months from to, uh, wrapping it around the senior center. You it's know, come all back of a around. Kabunk, you know? Yeah, 
Yeah, but I think it was when Linda was in office, that's when that legislation, everything got kind of worked on and brought about, and the possibility was on the table. Um, and again, it was an intricate part of the charrette. If you look at some of the renderings and the use for property and um, the tax revenue that could be realized um, through that development. So is this the, is this the lot that's behind um, uh, the shells? Oh, it's behind. Oh, I thought it was well, just on the, the other side of Iron Horse. Just for there, there are three lots. The There's one three behind right. Fitzgerald's is right. not completed. Okay. It's the other two lots that are north of that. Right. So the DOT lot. I'm sorry. This this DOT lot is it's that the one behind Bank of America. The, the DOT actually owns them all. Right. But the one, the, the southernmost lot, the corner of Drake Hill, will remain as the, the bus um, sort of commuter lot. Commuter lot. Okay. The ones north of that are the ones that we're talking about. Okay. One, just one thing. So we touched owned? upon it on the on the senior center. Yeah. Um, at some point, is there going to be a better understanding of how many seniors we have in town? <laughs> how many people actually use the center who are not repeat? So we start talking about millions of dollars. Yeah. What percent of town seniors actually use the uh, the facility? so that we have a sense of is this a highly popular current function or is it something that only a well it, it's a really good question mark um, but how many seniors don't use the current facility because it doesn't meet the needs of the population well, let's just start so. with what we I, have and how it's used and, and, what and then go from there the other point is is when you're talking about an infrastructure project that you're talking about spending millions of dollars on, you're not building this for today. You're building this for tomorrow. And I, I'd ask a, a, a better question is, is the senior center kind of a relic of the past? I, I mean, people don't just totter off, you know, in, into retire. I mean, I, I don't see that anymore. I mean, I, I don't see that I mean, if we want to make use of, if we want to incorporate people, shouldn't they be incorporated into the community instead of sending them off into the center? I, I mean, I know, I know a lot of people who are in the demo and they're not going to senior centers. I mean, I'll they're going. Two. I'm just saying, <laughs> Jay, going um, forward, if that could be better uh, addressed. So there's so a there's public a there's a public hearing on the 17th. Okay. Okay. Um, <coughs> and okay. just. Two quick things, and, and to your comment, and that is, there's been a lot of discussion around the fact that, as a community as a whole, we have abilities and facilities where things are taking place in a bunch of different areas, which is, I think, good because it it, it shares your space, it, it shares that interaction, um, and um, folks from the senior center, um, it, the staff has expressed an interest to really want it to stay in the center of town, at least as its core, um, and. Um, so there's, I'm hoping that we, we asked, and I actually wasn't there at the January meeting um, for the Board of Selectmen, but a lot of questions were asked, um, and Jeff, and I, and I hope Hiram as well, is pulling together some information for that um, uh, public hearing. But just by way of sharing with you, um, Cheryl Cook had inquired with Mickey LaCours back um, that um, their membership, and this is an interesting use of terms because I don't think it's membership per se in terms of, okay, I pay $50, but I don't necessarily go. It's their usage. So they have 19% uh, of our members are under age 70. We have an average 159 people a day at the center. 19% of that would be 30. So her question was around your point. You know, I'm 50 years old. I'm five ways away, years away from being 55. I, in five years, I'm not going to start going to the senior center and using a lot of their facilities. And so we're trying to get a better understanding, not only of the current uses, forecasting future use. That's been done. How accurate is it? Um, in the same way that we plan for the high school, of course, had we gone with what was anticipated as being 2,000 students, we would have overplanned for that. So there's a real um, consideration around making sure you're appropriately planning for the future use of the facility. So I bring it up. Yep. more from right. the lot the economic development impact on that lot and um, you know what I think we could accomplish with capital that would um, help fulfill a lot of things and speak to economic development so in the yeah but that's all that's all very important but it's all like we're talking about putting the cat before the horse I mean th there's never been a, a hard 
questionnaire from that's been put out from the seniors going on, and I don't care where you put the line of demarcation, 50, 45, 10, you know, pick wherever you want. But to get the hard data before we go ahead with some commitment for seven or eight million bucks, right. I think is crazy. Because yeah. I know a lot of seniors, of which I'm proud to be one of them, who say, you guys are all nuts, you know? We don't <laughs> think we should even be having a senior center. So I would have think you're nuts anyway, not... Thank you. I know that. No. You have the data, you know, I mean, yeah. we can talk uh, in perpetuity yeah, I, on I this I agree. Thing. It's yeah. important to have that at some point. Don't yeah, it? and I'm hoping, um, you know, we're having a public hearing, the public's being asked to comment. What's really going to be important is the information that's shared at that time with more specific detail. I, I really do think a phased approach to Eno is the way to go and I don't feel like we have as much information as we could on that and so that's just P again. Public I hearings don't get to that issue though Nancy, you know. Public hearings you get the same old group that will come out all the time. You need to get a consensus because when this finally gets put to a vote mm -hmm. of the public, then the guys like me and some of the other seniors who say, hey, you're wasting your time, will vote no. Yeah. Well, to the extent in which I would encourage the commission to come to the public hearing and speak to the consideration of a lot that could produce a million dollars annually in revenue for the town, that's an important. And the date is the 17th? 17th. Okay. Also, yeah. I'd like to okay. um, encourage some people some of us do some volunteer work over there on a lunch day and serve the people. In Nino Hall, two full rooms are filled with dining tables. Uh, we wait on tables. I think we're a graying society. It, whether you can look forward to 10 to 15 years down the road, we'll all be doing the same thing, looking for companionship, things to do, I don't know. Uh, will we all be healthier than we are now? I don't know. But I think whether it takes the form of re refurbishing Eno, which is my preference, or building something, <coughs> maybe you should go there when they're having a uh, volunteer and see how for yourself. Yeah. The hell with a public healing. Just go for yourself. See okay. it. So it, my point is we need data for that. So in the interest of time, yes, let's, I'm move, sorry. Let, let's and close I'm up on budget and then let's go over to Hiram so we can, okay. we missed them at the last meeting and we have lots yeah. of things to. And just a comment on the process group. These folks, unfortunately, and fortunately, because they've been brought together to the, to the full group of the task force working on all the other stuff that I've been speaking about, they haven't met themselves as a core group, uh, a subgroup since October. So they're having a special meeting next week um, and theirs, to, to Chris's point on orientation, and some land use process recommendations. Um, I need to also sidebar and tell you that having attended the personnel subcommittee meeting, there's discussion around um, charter revision and some other things happening. The combining of planning and zoning, if that's a recommendation out of this group, would need to be done through the charter revision. So there's some timing that might, you know, sort of work in terms of if that recommendation comes forward or not. Um, so just a, a side note on that. Um, as far as the budget goes, and again, I wasn't here for the December meeting, but where we are right now, and, and it speaks to sort of everything I've, uh, I've just covered in terms of our accomplishments to date, um, we're going to be finalizing the use of the $32,000 budget that we received. Um, uh, for the current fiscal year. For this current fiscal year, we're working, again, through the website work, some ancillary things in support of that website regarding photography video, different things that will make up that website. Um, the use of the, the um, refreshing of current materials, the school piece. Um, I know Hiram and his budget actually already has some things in there for ongoing education, which again with the process group really didn't get a chance to kind of come together for a recommendation. So although not part of the 32,000, um, when we round this whole thing out, what you'll see is as the task force summarizes some of its long-term recommendations and it ra when it wraps up at the, in, um, the end of this year, um, those recommendations will be for um, ongoing, some ongoing funding mechanisms to support some of the things we're recommending and that will impact next year's uh, Is budget. charter revision going to be on the Board of Selectmen's agenda to form a charter revision commission? Is that what I'm hearing? No, there's no formal proposal on that right, right. now, Dave. I, I think there's an inevitability of a conversation around that, and, and everyone can draw their own conclusions as to whether or not you think it will happen or not. But 
So I would imagine at some point the Board of Selectmen will discuss that there should be a, a Charter Revision Commission. Yeah. That we have not formally reached that point at this point. Yeah, and I didn't mean to intimate that. The group is, is the Personnel Subcommittee is discussing having a public hearing around that, that topic, and so folks will have a chance right. to chime in on that, and then they'll decide to bring a recommendation back to the Board of Selectmen, and, and the Board of Selectmen will vote on that. Thank you very so, much. Thanks. That's it. We'll see you soon. You will, next month. Uh, Planning Director update, Hiram Peck. He just He's wheeling over. himself over. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, a couple of things that I'll just talk about. Uh, it says uh, Weetog Village Study update, so I'll just start there and then go wherever you'd like to go. The Weetog Village Study is something that we started uh, a year or so ago. We got about halfway through it. Um, I mentioned to the Board of Selectmen at the time that the project was underfunded and we got about halfway done before we ran out of money and so that's where that project is right now. What I have done is put in uh, my budget for next year um, the ability to finish that to also um, complete the WETOG study and initiate the North Village District and North Village Village District study uh, as well. Um, the other alternative that I had for that was to also complete um, a similar type study for the Northeast Utilities property. As you may notice recently, we've had a little bit of, um, of uh, newspaper coverage with regard to what's going to happen with Northeast Utilities, whether they're going to be there, whether they're not. Um, we don't know. I've talked to the, um, to the owner's representative. I'm not sure whether they're going to leave or not. I'm sure they're convinced they're going to leave. Some other people are not so convinced. So we don't know yet. So I wanted to put that in as a possible alternative. So completing the WETOG study, possibly initiating the North Village Village District study uh, or the Northeast Utilities Property study, I put that in, in my budget in, under contractual services, and that total is $57,000. I've talked with a number of consultants about um, talking to uh, doing that. Um, it, completing that study, uh, starting the North Village study or the Northeast Utilities property is most of what would be required. In addition to that, as you know, you may recall from the town center study, after that, after the sort of the, the charrette piece was done, there was a period of time that's needed to go back to write the code, to draft the code, to bring that back to the public, to talk to people about what it says, and then ultimately to get it adopted. That, in addition, is another $30,000. So when I talked to the select, first selectman about this and the, and the finance director um, yesterday, um, she suggested that maybe putting it directly in our budget, you know, for an operating budget, it's not the right place for that number. And so that maybe it should go either in a capital budget or maybe in a CNR budget, capital non-recurring budget item. So I've got to talk with Jeff um, Che on Tuesday about whether to sort of reallocate that money. But that's the, that's the amount of money that we're talking about, about $90,000. The reason I put um, the, uh, uh, the WETOG on the, the agenda was that it, in our last meeting there was some confusion about what is it on the next stage we wish to accomplish? Could you just briefly sort of say what is it that we want to finish, sure. accomplish to finish that up? Sure. Some of you that uh, attended some of those initial public meetings may recall there were some really nice graphics that were put together, and that's where it stopped. That's where the whole process stopped. So we talked about not only what could happen to the Mitchell property, but what's going to happen around the, um, the inn, the Simsbury Inn property, what's going to happen with a number of the properties from 185 right near where Abigail's intersection is with the Top Meadow in that, in that particular area. As a matter of fact, later this morning I have a person who owns um, eight or so acres in that area, very anxious to, to get this completed because they would like to do something with that property. So it would be completing, uh, taking the look at that property all the way from 185 up to Powder Forest Drive and finishing that up, drafting the code and getting getting that implemented. So drafting the code so that all the property owners yeah. in the town knows what can happen there. That's right. It'll look, in, in a way, it, it, it will be, in terms of its format, it'll look very similar to what we did with the town center. Yep. It'll be a different feel because the, the area is different. And we don't want to create another town center. Uh, but one of the things that we did, remember, when we did the Route 10 study, was kind of create that Weetog Village Green, which was kind of a cool thing in the middle of uh, that intersection with uh, Sand Hill and, and so on in that area. So there's a tremendous amount of great, great potential there. Um, if, if the Board of Selectmen can see its way, and the Board of Finance, of course, and the public can see its way toward finishing those and funding those, I think it'd be a, a really a great next step for the for that area. Any questions on that? Yeah, I got some questions. Be before you launch into spending 
would you say ninety thousand dollars for more studies? Yeah. What's the status on the Hartford? Uh, there's, there's because that, that's such a big, big impact down there, you know. Dave, I know that um, people are concerned about it. I can, and I can't guarantee anything. Certainly, I can only tell you what I know and what I can say publicly right now, is that there are a number of parties that are looking at that property. There are a number of really interesting ideas around what's going on with that property. I've met with some of the people that are interested in that property from out of state, uh, people that have property in Connecticut that understand what the real estate market in Connecticut's like, and I can tell you that they're very enthusiastic about proceeding. It's a big project, and so it's not going to happen in 10 minutes. The uh, Hartford is probably going to be in that property themselves for another year, probably till the end of 15, beginning of 16, first quarter of 16, something like that. Um, you know, they could sell it tomorrow and move out tomorrow. I'm not saying that's the, the case, but I think that uh, from what we know now, they'll be there for another year, and we're continuing to talk with people that the realtors, their realtors, send to us to talk to us uh, in the meantime. So I'm encouraged that something's going to happen within the next. No, but year. you understand the point I'm trying to make. The try to have another expenditure to study that section while well, this is in a, a state of quiescence or whatever it is. Uh, it seems to me like you're spending study money far in advance of having some resolution of something that is going to happen. We know that's going to happen one way or the other. Either the building's going to come down and we're going to have the land donated to the town or who knows what's going to happen. But, uh, but I just uh, can't see spending $90,000 to study down there again uh, the continuation, why that's that's in a state of uh, the unknown. Yeah, two, two things. One is, um, in, in the planning world, the idea is, is to anticipate what's going to happen. Or yeah, I know, happen. but in the long run, we're all dead. We all know that. The, the second so, thing, that's true. The second thing is, this is not a restudy of the Hartford area. That's That's been done. I know that, too. Okay. The, se the third thing is, some of the people that are coming in to talk about it now are very enthusiastic about exactly what we did with the Charette the Hartford property. They understand that. They understand the code. They understand the ability of the code to get things approved very quickly. We've also coordinated with the state, DECD um, and DEP, with regard to getting permits in place. If, if somebody came in and bought that property and wanted to do something quickly, we have it in writing that they'll cooperate with us. They have assigned an ombudsman to make sure that those things move forward quickly. So there's a lot of incentives that have been put in place for whoever buys that property to move forward. So a lot of good stuff has, has actually already occurred. And it may not be on the surface. And as I said, there are some things that, that I am aware of that I, that I can't talk about. I can just say that I'm enthusiastic and I'm encouraged that something will happen within the next year. That's, that's the We Talk part anyway. You want to ask the other question too? Big Y? Oh, uh, we'll cut the ribbon at the end of this discussion. <laughs> yeah, as soon as, uh, I know they they turned in the uh, Mylar for the property the other day, which is a, an incremental small step forward. They're working with DOT on the traffic signal right now. They're doing some final fine tuning on the traffic signal for their turning, for their uh, driveway into that property. Um, so that as soon as they get those details up, I would I would expect in the springtime we're going to start to see some building demolition, some site grading, things that, that of that nature. That's my understanding last I talked with them. So they're probably not going to start this week. Probably as soon as the snow goes There's away. There's too much snow. Bit. I'm not going to live forever, Hiram, so thank you. Start shoveling. <laughs> Dave shoveling. will be the first I customer. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems that way. <laughs> Somebody said that uh, they, they went to the doctor. You and don't they start said your they, car. They had, they, had, they had a terminal illness, and the doctor said, well, you know, why don't you just go marry a real estate agent? And say, well, that makes you live longer. <laughs> 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 Thanks. 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 A um, couple other things that are going on too. A uh, couple of things D Dave mentioned too about uh, gathering public input with regard to the what I call the community center slash senior center. Um, gathering that public input on a, on a broad uh, community-wide basis I do think is very important. I think that 159 folks or whatever it is probably not going to decide whether this gets funded or doesn't get funded at whatever level and wherever it's located. So, so I would think that that's that's certainly something that we can look forward to as well. We did see this week. Um, a sort of a uh, an update on the Simsbury Meadows plan that was started by this committee a number Good. of years ago. Is that a draft? Uh, it's a draft that will be coming back to public meeting in the very near future. Uh, there were some tweaks. That there was a one public meeting that was held uh, a month ago, something uh, like a that. A couple months ago. A couple months ago. Yeah. Time flies. And, and I think that um, 
Uh, the, the things that you'll see in there I think are good. There are a lot of questions. Obviously a good deal of it is floodplain. has to be dealt with very carefully. Um, but the Performing Arts Center is obviously very interested. The dog park is located <coughs> there. Um, there are some discussions about whether the access that's there now is in the really in the right place or whether that should be changed. Some very interesting proposals about that I think we'll see. And some of the suggestions that came out of the last public meeting are incorporated into the new draft that you'll see. The very graphic presentation. So I think uh, Jeff is working on that now with a consultant. I think Plus O'Neill's finishing that up now. Is the draft available? Not yet, but it will be uh, probably within a week or so. Okay. Uh, it was just yesterday, that I, yesterday or day before that I saw it, so I'm sure it'll be very shortly because we had some suggestions to them about uh, changing the graphics. One of the other things we wanted to do with that study was make sure that it also at least took into account one old bridge, the fact that the town has acquired that property now, and say, yeah, this is, this is part of it as well. So if we're going to talk about was a canoe launch area or whatever it happens to turn out to be, um, that that'll be sort of included as part of that whole whole plan as well. There were lots of discussions about um, uh, paths and walkways and, and how that could be done. And the fact is, again, we're dealing with a floodplain, so it's an area that actively floods quite frequently. We've got to be very, very careful there. So lots of stuff uh, will be coming very shortly on that. Can I ask a question around that? Um, so with that draft, in terms of implementing um, I would imagine it would be phased in terms, in terms of what would be done down there. Um, is there any information regarding that um, in terms of funding to, to begin to implement what the study would be? Um, the, I'm sure there is. Jeff has got it. Jeff has really been in charge of that. Jeff Shea has been in charge of that. In, in what the funding for implementation? Yeah, so the hundred twenty-five thousand dollars that was that's been allocated for the implementation of that plan. It's in the so I, I, you, That was mentioned when we when that meeting took place, and I went back and looked in the CIP plan, and I couldn't find. Well, at our last meeting, um, who went and checked that? Came back and said yes. That was Lou George. Not Lou. Um, Lou um, Tom Cook. Tom Cook. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's all the check. He went. He I, went back and checked and said, yeah, yeah that okay. that had been allocated. Yeah. For implementation. Okay. Yeah, I think there's no question that it's going to have to be phased because some of the things that are down there are going to require some very careful planning and some, some detailed yeah, engineering. I, I think it should be phased, sure. Yeah. So that, that'll probably <coughs> One of the other things <coughs> I want to mention that I think will be of, of direct impact to this uh, commission and uh, is the uh, shared parking that we talked about in the town center. Main Street uh, has agreed to help uh, sponsor uh, some meetings um, probably in March with two things. One is shared parking I just mentioned and the other is signage for a business community as well. Uh, there's been lots of discussion about signage and whether you know the signage that we have in the regulations now is appropriate, whether it's large enough, whether it's you know constructed properly. So we'll be discussing both of those things, shared parking and signage. Both are very important to the local business community and primarily in the town center area. That's what we're really heading toward right now. The shared parking issue is a significant issue. Uh, staff in our department has spent a lot of time recently researching historically how permits were issued, what basis they were issued on, and then all of a sudden people forgetting that they were required to do certain things you know, after a few years or a couple owners down the road. Um, if there were discussions about shared parking, some people may have seemed to have forgotten that. And now they're putting up signs saying, you know, parking for my customers only, that kind of thing. And we've got to get to the bottom of that. It's a very sensitive issue. We understand that. But if people are going to get permits based upon those things and then later on say, well, I didn't really mean that. You can't do that because what happens is it adversely affects a lot of the other businesses in town. When a permit is issued for shared parking, parking is that like a covenant that's on uh, part of the deed? So not that, that when not you that buy the property, yeah. you realize not that formal. Not that formal. It isn't. No, but when you do, you know, um, your your research on the property when someone's purchasing the property, I would think if they had a variance or if they had a permit for a particular use, they, the, the attorney or title searcher, whoever, was, would take a look at that and say, okay, these are the restrictions that we have to live with based upon the permits that were issued for this. For example, um, the, the old police uh, headquarters built behind um, the landmark building, that was a, a, a building that had a very limited parking. As a matter of fact, currently only has four spaces behind the building. Well, that permit was given. There were certain variances given. Then there was a second floor put on the building. So you increase the square footage. You increase the potential office space that's there. But there's no increase in parking. Where are those people supposed to go? And so there's lots of discussion about sharing parking when these permits are issued. And hopefully, 
people will understand that um, we need to all figure out how to get along here. Because I'm just thinking if you know you go several years down the road and somebody buys the property, is it easily identifiable that you're buying this property with shared parking? So it's not an issue like I didn't know or the, the research well, wasn't good enough. If the something. title search is done correctly, it should be. It should <laughs> easily. Be. Yeah. And I mean, you, you would want to know at closing that, by the way, you should know before well, closing you have <laughs> shared parking. No, it, it it's is not on the deed. It won't be in the title. Well, no, but it's in the permit process. The title search just doesn't include the deed. It includes the variances in the permit process when um, the no, title search. down the road. That, that's where that information. Yeah, but every title, whether when the property conveys, no matter if it's tomorrow or ten years from now, a complete title search should include not only what's in the deed and the land records, but what the permit process was for the the building and the parcel, because then it's not. A complete title search, and there could be. So it's only through the title search that a, a, a well executed title search, somebody's actually going to know. Well, because it's not going to be readily available in the deed yeah, because okay. it's not right. recorded in the land records. And so those are those are exactly the kinds of things that we need to have this discussion with the business community. We're not trying to to uh, blindside anybody here. We're trying to make sure that they all understand that. Look, you know, three owners ago, your building was given these permits, and here here were the conditions that it was issued under. Right. We're not trying to say that we're trying to restrict anybody's property or provide covenants. I think Lou was, you know, big, you know, on that last time, and we're trying to make sure that people understand. We just need to figure out how to how to satisfy and accommodate the entire business community in that area. So, in the town town center. Well, I area. think West Hart. I mean, as we've talked about, West Hartford is yeah. such a great example of how it transformed the center. That if they're reminded of how well that. <laughs> Worked. I mean, I remember West Hartford Center when I was significantly younger. It was not as vibrant as it is today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there were there were roofs, there were holes in the roof of the town hall, and birds flying in and out. And one thing West Hartford did was create a parking authority, which is a little bit, you know, a little bit far to the left for mm -hmm. some people. You know, that, that don't really want to see another authority created. And perhaps that's down the road, but we need need to figure out how to get everybody to, to uh, accommodate each other and take down some of these, you know, my customers only parking. Well, stuff. Ridgefield has the same thing. They have shared parking, yep. and they have a vibrant downtown. Yeah, absolutely. It works out well, and I think once people begin to realize that, hopefully, it will will work out. So, so, so if the parking if the parking deck gets put in, it might obviate some of the issues, right? Absolutely. I mean, if, if yeah. Would help everybody, frankly, yeah. if we can figure out how to fund it. Yep. A uh, couple other quick things, um, the Meadows Community Center, Hartford, um, we're at 690 Hop Meadow Street, which is a former Webster Bank building. If it hadn't been for the three snowstorms, that probably would have gotten its approval and they would be starting on that already. Um, so we're looking forward to that moving forward. I think they are as well. Uh, all the questions that we had with regard to drainage and proximity to EB and so on have all been answered. I think somebody answered the question about, you know, is it next to this other place that's going to give them problems? And the answer to that is no, it's been worked out. Wetlands issues have been worked out and that's looking to move forward as well. Um, there was a while ago another PAD development that was approved on Powder Forest Drive. As you know, the Landworks development, uh, as you go up Powder Forest Drive, on the left-hand side behind the inn was approved. That's uh, a variety of residential structures, uh, some townhouses, uh, some apartments, and then some workforce units. And that uh, was recently approved by the Zoning Commission. Re they're getting ready to move forward as well. Um, on the other side of the street, on the opposite side of the street, originally approved was a, um, an assisted living facility, a CCRC, Continuing Care Retirement Community. Um, I just got word yesterday that they're um, putting their plans together and that they will be in shortly as well. For a, re for a retirement? Or Continuing okay. Care Retirement Community, correct. So okay, that. But do you, what's the, what would be the capacity of that? <coughs> 275 units. Okay. So you, you know, to that point, Hiram, when, when you look at the major, major change, and I know there's been some discussion on this with the planning guys, I think, about the number of apartments mm -hmm. that have already are being built out on Giorgio's project, which when you add them all together, it's about 220 when you count the mobile sclerosis, right? So well, there's 168, and then there's 48 in the uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's close to 220. When when you add up everything that's pending or coming through the pipeline, you can come to numbers like a thousand mm -hmm. new apartments that possibly could come into the town. Now that is a major, major change mm -hmm. in the demographics of the community. 
And I, I'm not sure if, if people want to really understand what we're talking about, take a ride up Route 10 and see that Giorgio's project. That is humongous. It also brings into, into the scene the, and I know it's legal under the permits that we have in the town, but remember the big fire they had in those uh, com that complex across from Manhattan about three or four weeks ago? They had it all on TV. That was exactly the same construction as what we have up here. It's all stick construction. Well, stick construction's fine, but if you don't have any distance and you don't have enough water, you get what they got in, in uh, the Palisades. Yeah. So all that stuff gets into this equation, you know. We, we can't go on just uh, the way we have been because a thousand apartments is, I don't know where all the people are going to come from. Yeah, that's, that's uh, the number's too high, Dave. I mean, No, actually, I, you want me to add them up here for yeah, you? Yeah, I can tell you the numbers, 816. Uh, well, you, but fact. you're missing a couple, like maybe uh, Mike Gerard's project, which is pending. Did we, I can I'm not talking approved, I'm talking about the way the businessman is looking at this thing, okay? I, I can tell you that the developers that are around very enthusiastic about coming to town. Yeah. The, uh, the reason is that um, there needs to be more housing for younger people. <laughs> The reason I, the developers look as good as I, I, I think that, that I think I disagree with that premise. You can disagree with it if you I like. I you did dis a paper. I we'll also be disagreeing with Yvonne Klein, who's the commissioner of housing for the state of Connecticut, who made a very. Um, very good presentation to the task force. Well, for the state of Connecticut, that that might be well and no, good. No, I mean, I, she came obviously knowing she was speaking specifically. But I, 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 the the premise that you need to be bringing more young people. I'm gonna qual. I'm gonna have these as you know re college graduates, so they get their diploma in May, and within the next 18 months, coming to Simsbury, it's a horrible idea. You want young people to go out into the world and gain experience. They worry about brain drain. What you want people is you want them to go out in the world, you want them to get experience, you want them to come back. This is a type of a community that's good for when people want to come and have families. There's other communities that are great for when you're, if you're younger and you want to come back to Connecticut, come back to West Hartford. There's more, there's more going on in West Hartford for you. We shouldn't be trying to compete with, I mean, we can't compete with the New Yorks and Bostons, and I don't think we should be trying to compete with the West Hartfords. To, to build all these apartments with the hope that you're going to be bringing in young professionals when, when what's really going to come in is going to be very, very different, it's, it, it's concerning. If we had the Hartford redeveloped, and if we put some fantastic technology park in there where we had startups and other businesses and lots of things that are driving then yeah I'm on board we would we would need that type of housing but unless you have a magnet to bring in the jobs of the people you want to live in those apartments it, it, this is this could end up being a, a colossal mistake. Chris, do you no. agree with that? Colossal. Let me just say, <laughs> real estate. Person. Okay, put me on the spot. But in the interest of <laughs> no. time, this is a whole other discussion. You know, the market drives, and the, we have the regulations. And if they want to build apartments and it's permissible, they're going to do it, and that's what they follow. So no, 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 they're not necessarily uh, going to do it. That's why we have commissions. Right, but so it's, it's all like within the regulatory I mean, it's, it's de Development for development's sake. Yeah, they're they're excited because it's the cheap money. to put up apartments. <laughs> Let's finish up on Hiram's presentation. Okay. The, uh, and I just wanted to, to, to finish that point. I, I did a paper a while ago, our department did a paper a while ago on a housing in the town, right. so you all have a copy yeah, of that. Yeah, it was a good sure. paper. Okay. So I think that explains a lot about where we are currently. Um, I can tell you that uh, yesterday I, I discussed with the first selectman, as I said, and the finance director, uh, budget for the EDC and all the other seven commissions that we deal with. I uh, don't know what will happen uh, to that budget, but uh, we'll be looking forward to uh, your support at the budget hearings. Which is? In the near future. I don't know yet. But <laughs> Not yet. set, no date yet. The Schedule. first selectman is going to present her budget to the board of selectmen on February 26th, and then um, there will be budget hearings taking place. Um, I think we have one on March 5th. I know that we've got a full day Saturday on March 7th, and 
I think that will end up being where most of the departments make their presentations to us initially. And then um, the uh, 8th, 9th, that week there, we've got a couple of meetings scheduled um, within that week to complete um, the budget. So where does EDC have its biggest bang? It's the fifth, the fifth or the, the all day seventh um, or ninth? Yes. Where the detail of that has not come out. Okay, from I, I will let you, you know. Let us know. Let us know by email when yeah. when the you know not, not not to get into the detail but get into the overall yeah. presentation. So, I think and the, and the commission support at these meetings I think is really important. <coughs> I do I think that the board of selectmen needs to know and if it, you know that, that that you're supportive of and I think you also need to. Um, just hear what else is going on in terms of how to balance it. So I just one comment, and I'll, I'll make this again, I'm sure, for the Board of Select and Board of Finance, is that um, some of the requests that we've made for funding may seem like a lot. And people say, well, no, and we're cutting $25 here and $50 there. The amount of money that is for the municipal side of this budget is so small, so small, that if everyone really got enough to actually function the way they'd like to function, I think the total increase would still be minimal. Budgets continue to pass resoundingly on a yearly basis, and whether they pass by 6,000 votes or 600 votes, uh, I'm not sure that it's a, you know, a big difference, but it would allow us the, the ability to do more to make sure that, that the needs of commissions like this are, are satisfied. Whatever help you can be in getting our budgets through, that'd be great. Okay, so if you could just give us dates on when yep. uh, the, the hearings are going to start and that, that. Uh, we can show up, I'll be happy to show up yeah. for all of yep. us or some of us. Any other questions in the meantime, just feel free to let me know. I just want to thank you for all of your hard work on the GIS <laughs> system. Yeah. It is so amazing yeah. and so user-friendly and it's fabulous. Yeah, how many people, Dave, do you like the new system, GIS system? I'm sorry? Do you like the new GIS system? Oh yeah, I'm very familiar with it. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, any other I'm questions? Ahead. It's great. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Very nice. thank I'm going to run. I just want to say one more thing, though. I was at, um, and this speaks to sort of all the whole center town area that parking and all, a whole bunch of other stuff that we talked about. But I was at uh, Dave Richards' building last night. Um, there was an event there with um, sort of all, uh, some didn't of the get, We didn't get an invite. In that building. I don't, I can't speak to that. Um, but there's a lot of exciting um, excitement within that building in terms of the uses and the folks that are in there. Um, I know. Um, Which building is this, Nancy? It's the old Sensory Bank building. Okay. So I know that the area has met with some challenges that have referenced in terms of the parking. Um, but uh, the, the building is, you know, there's a, a lot of, um, a couple of, of uh, good sized firms in there and then some folks that are uh, renting rooms and such. Um, releasing rooms in there and so a lot of, of um, good economic um, <coughs> vitality within the building itself. I just wanted to share uh, that with you. So. Okay. You're right. That's, you. that's, that's, a, that's a nice building. It is. The other building he owns is a lousy building. Structure. Okay. okay. <laughs> we got to move on. <laughs> well, well can we have Spanish Nancy, Spain. Nancy, would you please like to tell us about the Farmington <laughs> Village <laughs> Visitors <coughs> Farmington yeah, Village Visitors Association? Sure. Thank you. And, and, and quickly, first of all, oh, oh, one. thank you. You're welcome. Sorry it was late, but uh, it is what it is. Thank you. This oh, is an obstacle picture. course, Nancy. I know. Be careful. You can't sue, you know. Huh? You can't sue if you trip. True. Okay. Just just pretend, I'll just pretend you push me. <laughs> <laughs> quickly, uh, quickly, quickly. Um, our February 4th event, Get Sweet in the Farmington Valley, you missed a, a lovely event with wonderful door prizes. But anyway, that's that's over and done with. We are certainly moving ahead. We are starting a um, member showcase. So every two months we're not going to compete with the chamber, but we're still going to have a two hour thing where we can showcase. And we're starting with one, one business member from all of our eight participating towns. Um, Simsbury's will be the first, it will be in April, but until I'm 100% confirmed, I will let you know the, the date it'll be, you know, come, come visit type thing that is going on. We're, um, I would say in two weeks, the rec cards and the posters for the Tri-Simsbury Triathlon will be available there right now with the printer being approved by Simsbury Bank and all that, so we're doing that and we're working on goodie bags and volunteers to get that going for May 17th. Um, final itinerary ideas 
for our historic tavern tour are in the works and we we have a potential lecture speaker who will do a um, historic brew tasting April 30th and we'll give you the person and the location shortly that historic tavern tour with drinks in Bar Hampstead uh, takes off at 9.30 on May 2nd. Um, the other interesting things, Governor's Conference on Tourism is um, May 12th. Everything is May. This is crazy. Mm. And waiting for the snow order, to melt. In order to get people to come, they dropped the price from 159 169 to $99. So it'll be very interesting. The workshop information will be out shortly. Save the date should be coming out. And I would hope some of you would get that email. Um, and then there will be um, an introduction of the new deputy commissioner of DECD who's taking care of Connecticut State Branding and Tourism. I don't know if you know Kip Bergstrom left. Oh, I didn't know. Kip left. He, he is now trying to um, help the Amistad Center stay afloat. Oh. And the new person who has taken that position is a young man called, who's um, um, Tim Sullivan. He has a very interesting background as he shared with the Tourism Advisory Council. Uh, Tuesday afternoon. He worked with Lehman Brothers until they closed. He worked with Bloomberg until they all got fired. And then, then, then from there, you know, he did a little bit more in New York, did some a mass transit, and did some tourism, and then moved here and was on um, more transit and EDC at the beginning because his wife got a job teaching at UConn. And now he has taken Kip's position. So he's only been in a couple of months. Should we get nervous if he's now going to be the head of the EDC for the state? DECD. Oh. Yeah, no, no, no. Deputy <coughs> Commissioner of, of Tourism and Branding. Oh, but sorry. he does have EDC background and um, Transit Authority background in the state of Connecticut and in the state of New York. So who knows? You know, he's brand new. And in a nutshell, there you go. Okay, that's it. Yep. Any questions, comments? Nope. Um, quick question for you to think of, and it's not fair because Sarah's not here, um, but I'd like you to think about it. Not that I don't think your work is important, but um, we have always so much to go over. Is My thought is that we do your reports on a quarterly basis. Unless you had something that you needed our support on at a different meeting, because it takes a lot of your time to come here to report on... It, I just think we've got so much on our plate with a lot of changes that are going on, and I would would like to propose that to Sarah as well to see if that's something you guys would consider. And it's no offense to the fabulous work that you guys do. I just maybe you can focus on that a little bit more than showing up at 7:30 in the morning <laughs> once a month. To, you know, just something for us certainly, to consider. Yeah. You know, certainly, I understand. I feel like we shortchange a lot of people, and, and every three months, maybe maybe is the right way to go. Not that I don't like seeing you. Supplement with email, right? For, for a written, uh, you know, uh, or unless something, unless an event comes up, up that you'd like to make sure that gets out there. So, okay, sure, for, something to consider. For Food for thought. Um, okay, thank you very and much. And I'm not offended. Thanks. <laughs> um, uh, in the interest of time, I'll put this on the next uh, on the next agenda. This is the old. Drake Hill Flower Bridge uh, regarding the Betty Hudson house and there's also uh, there was a tour uh, a couple weeks ago with sort of what are we going to do with it so I'd like to put it on the agenda for next week I will try to get this out this sort of gives you about all the different things that could or could not be and <coughs> on the on the property uh, and how that would tie in to Simsbury Meadows uh, its best and highest use from an economic point of view or uh, Farming New Valley <coughs> Watershed uh, Association, any of those things. So I'll get this out, then be food for thought, and put that on the next agenda. Um, if you could send us any, and then if you have any other ideas too, let me know as soon as possible and get those to Jeff Shea as soon as possible so we can get your ideas. And yeah, so we'll put that on the uh, next agenda. Aside from that, uh, is there any old or new business that anybody would like to raise? Yes. I have some new business. New business? Um, I am a member of the Chamber of Commerce and was asked to sit um, on their marketing committee and they just launched a new logo and they are redoing their website um, 
I would like to propose in light of the fact that we are redoing our website and rebranding the town are refreshing the brand of the town they are launching a new website and rebranding the chamber and I think we need to have a collaborative meeting to make sure that the message that is getting out there about the town of Simsbury is um, consistent and if having a meeting amongst EDC members the Chamber of Commerce and Main Street Partnership I think now is a great opportunity to bring us together to have some sort of you know um, meeting to make sure we're all on the same page because um, some of the things that were proposed I think were um, that the chamber is changing is also about branding the town and I think it needs to be consistent with what the vision of the marketing committee about branding the town is because um, you know we want to make sure the message is the same and I don't know how what your thoughts are on that or but I think that because a lot of people are looking at changing things right now that we want to make sure that we're all changing and we're consistent with the message that's getting out there about economic development and the brand of Simsbury so, I, yeah um, I do branding for business so I'm very sensitive that everything should be um, uh, unified uh, but who pays what bill you know uh, the chamber is its own um, economic uh, group or and or the town has a budget yep. and we all uh, operate on different funding uh, so my concern uh, would be how much are we going to collaborate and support each other but I think being respectful of what they want to do I developed their logo years ago so the logo that they have now definitely needed refreshing so I'm glad to hear they're redesigning their their brand um, but they should know of all the kind of things we've been through recently right and well yeah you're part of that group that well I stepped up to volunteer for that group because of the work that we've been doing because I got concerned that absolutely we need to make sure we we're all going down the same story. path we all have different missions right but and we identify those areas where we overlap and yeah, be on those because I issues. think we need to include tourism in the conversation. And what about Sarah Nelson? Well, that's Main right. Street, I think we need know, to include what, Main what Street, the Chamber, EDC, and tourism in a conversation because we're all kind of doing things, and we want to make sure we're not duplicating efforts. We're not <coughs> contrasting contrasting efforts. efforts. Unified I, one is really and, the power of a brand. Because they're in their beta testing on their website now. They've launched their logo. They're doing a video um, about the town of Simsbury. I, I just think it's all a good opportunity for us to kind of have a sit down and mm -hmm. talk about what our goals are and where everybody's going and how we can help each other and how we're different and um, you know how we're meeting the missions of each of the groups and but just a thought right was um, the new chamber director um, invited to participate in the task force uh, EDC task force because I would think that hearing you know I don't getting know because she's new to the position so yeah um, but I Lou George who sits on the task force is on the government mm -hmm. affairs committee for the chamber so he's very active in the chamber board so um, and he's on EDC, so. He, but I think that the all marketing. four of those groups, because I know tourism is having a meeting that they've invited um, Sarah and myself to on Tuesday regarding the school piece that we just discussed. So tourism's got something going on. We've got something going on. The Main Street, because the, the rebranding is going to have a change, and the Chamber is rebranding themselves right now. So I think it's a great opportunity for us to be um, all on the same page or in the same direction um, and I don't know how to go about doing that I'd be happy to coordinate a time with everybody if everybody thought it was um, I think you should coordinate it but I don't think it should be through the EDC I think you should have the chamber tourism well I think the EDC I think is an appropriate yeah, well, commission to pray, bring everybody think. together I don't well I don't think it should be a, a I think if you want to coordinate these things, that's wonderful. But I don't think the EDC should be the coordinator. So that, that's my point on it. Why? Say that to look. Well, I just don't think it's our role. These are private entities. There, nothing to do. But we're with not going to be telling them what they need to I do. Know, I think I they know. need to. Fine, come and tell us the results well, what, of what you're you coordinating. Explore that to see where the overlaps are. Yeah. 
on That's which a good we, idea. Could, we could actually coordinate and create a message because I'm sure there's things that the chamber does that well, it's we not get, gonna be necessarily right. that interested in and something Main Street's doing, but there's probably at least three or four things that we overlap on that we could maybe pull in the same direction. Yeah, you, you're back on the issue of why Main Street, I've always had the problem with Main Street because they they get some funding from us and I think that's a conflict with the chamber, you know. But that's another issue. So yeah. anyway, why don't you explore that? Yep. And anything else? Oh or new? Up, was there a public comment or comment? Okay. In that case do we have a motion for adjournment? <laughs> Second it okay. please. Second. All Second. in favor. Thank you. Aye. Dave's voting aye. Nancy. I mean that's uh, so when you mentioned maybe sixty eight years.